Um, today I'm going to talk about Algorand. This is a consensus protocol based on Byzantine agreement, which promises to solve the blockchain dilemma. In this talk, I will also show you some results we've obtained uh, when implementing Algorand uh, in Python. Um, why Algorand, you may ask? Uh, some time ago, when we investigated uh, some uh, consensus protocols and uh, stumbled upon this, uh, this uh, protocol Al Algorand, we found it uh, really nice and wanted to get a better understanding of the techniques used in its design. So here is the outline of my talk. In the first part, I will give you a brief introduction of what Byzantine Agreement is and uh, give you the description of, uh, of the Byzantine Agreement protocol used in Algorand's design. Then I'm going to show you how to make it uh, more practical and show you some results we've obtained with our proof of concept implementation. So uh, a short motivation for a Byzantine agreement. A typical application of it is in blockchain. Here we have lots of users, either malicious as the red guys or honest as the green ones that follow the protocol. Sorry, that follow the protocol. And they want to decide the block to append in their variants of blockchains. So in order to decide, they perform some consensus protocol, in our case, a Byzantine agreement type one, to make this decision. So what is Byzantine agreement? Uh, it was introduced by Peace, Shostak and Lamport in 1980s. Um, this protocol satisfies two main properties called agreement and consistency. Here on this slide, you have illustrated the agreement property. So for explaining this, you can think of uh, the following scenario. We have uh, seven players, uh, each of them having an input as bit. And uh, the agreement property says that uh, the honest players, the green ones, always output uh, the same bit B, no matter how they start with or how the, the red ones the malicious guys uh, behave. The consistency properties uh, states that if the honest players start with the same bit B, they will always output uh, the same bit B. Uh, again, no matter how, uh, how the uh, red guys behave. Of course, we've uh, talked about uh, Byzantine agreement uh, inputs as bits so far. But in blockchain, we need to perform such a protocol with inputs as strings, as they are blocks of transactions. Uh, one typical, well, not typical, one natural way to get a Byzantine agreement with inputs as strings is to perform the Byzantine agreement protocol for each bit. But of course, that would uh, lead to a not so efficient way. Uh, Mikali one of the Algorand's uh, offers uh, comes up with a much cleaner solution. Um, he, he proposes uh, a technique to derive a Byzantine agreement protocol with inputs as strings, starting with a Byzantine agreement protocol with inputs as bits, using uh, a technique called graded consensus. I'm not going into details to say what graded consensus is about, but I would be happy to, to do so if interested. Uh, from now on, I will focus only on the, on the Byzantine agreement protocol with inputs as bits, as this is the only part that uh, we've implemented in Python. So now let's move on to what the protocol of Byzantine agreement type is in Algorand. First, let me show you some intuition. Uh, suppose we have uh, N players. Um, two thirds of them are honest, 2T plus one, and the remaining T1s are malicious. So here we have uh, seven players, five of them are 
uh, the green the green ones are honest, follow the protocol, and the red ones uh, deviate from the protocol. Uh, the, each player has a bit as an input and also has access to uh, uh, to uh, what we call it magical coin. See, uh, this common coin is uh, sampled as random and independent bit. You can think of this common coin as the player see it on the sky. So what the player can do? Uh, first, the player can send his bit to all the other players, uh, including himself. Then after he got all the bits from the players, uh, he can start counting. If the player gets at least two thirds of zeros, then he says my output is a uh, bit zero. If he counts at least two bits of ones, he says uh, the, my, my output bit is one. Else, if the player can't count uh, either uh, two thirds of zeros or two thirds of ones, he sets uh, his output bit as the common coin. It is easy to see that if the honest players uh, start with the same bit, they will output uh, that bit. This is because we have two thirds of honest players and each of them will send uh, that same bit. So any other uh, honest player will count two thirds of uh, identical bit. The agreement property, however, is satisfied with uh, probability at least one half. Uh, this is uh, because one thing to note is that we can have two players, two distinct honest players, one of them counting at least two thirds of zeros and the other one counting two thirds of ones. So we can have two distinct players that are uh, in case A respectively case B. Uh, that would easily contradict the total number of players. Uh, therefore, all the honest players will either be uh, in cases A and C, or all the, all the honest players will be in cases B and C. So the probability of agreement would be at least the probability of the common coin being a certain bit, which is one half, because it is sampled random. Algorand comes up with a recipe for generating this common coin, that uh, proves to be less magical, you will see how. Sorry. Yes. 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 Th that's uh, just uh, just an intuition. In Algorand, uh, you'll see how this C is sampled. So, uh, Algorand's recipe requires a minimal setup made of a common random string R, a digital signature scheme, and a hash function, which you can think of as a random oracle. So any player will actually generate his common coin on his own. And apparently, the common coins will be different. So uh, let's see how. Uh, any player uh, does. So first, uh, he, uh, the player signs the common random string with the digital signature and sends the signature to all the other players. Then after uh, checking if the signatures are valid, uh, the player computes the hash values of the signatures and see which of the hash values is minimum. And once he obtains the minimum, he takes the least significant bit. So um, each player gets his own common coin by taking the least significant bit of uh, hash values. I need to note that uh, in the case of two thirds of honest majority, these common coins generated by the honest players will be the same with very high probability. So the agreement will be reached by them with probability at least one third. Uh, the agreement seems to be reached with a small probability, so we need to think of ways to increase it. 
one natural way to do it is to just repeat the protocol. Let's say that the honest players start with inputs given by the first column, 0, 1, 0, 0. Then they perform the protocol and get uh, the outputs as in the second column, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And then with these bits as inputs, they repeat again the, the protocol and get the outputs as in the third column. If the players perform this protocol k times, then uh, the probability of reaching agreement is at least one minus two first to power k. So if the number of steps is higher, then uh, uh, the bigger chance to reach agreement. Um, due to the consistency property of the Byzantine agreement protocol, once the players reach agreement, as in the first column with ones, the green ones, they will always remain in agreement in future iterations of the protocol. But the players wouldn't know that they are already in agreement and they would spend uh, the future steps as being unnecessary. So Mikali, uh, the Algorand's uh, proposer, uh, comes with a solution to fix this issue. Uh, he proposes the following loop made of three steps. Uh, they are very similar to each other as variants of the protocol I just described before, but they differ in the generation of the common coin. Uh, the first two steps, as uh, their names suggest, have the common coin uh, fixed as a bit, either zero or one. Whereas in the last step, the common coin is generated as, um, as taking the least significant bit of uh, minimum of hash values. Um, the, the solution Mikali proposes it, uh, consists in the halt feature that appears in the first two steps. This halt uh, feature uh, allows the player to uh, give the output once he can uh, count two thirds of zeros or two thirds of ones and uh, just get out of the game. So once the player uh, halts, he won't spend the future steps and just, uh, uh, just get out of the protocol. Um, I need to mention that uh, this uh, protocol I'm showing you here is a bit adapted in Algorand with uh, minor technical changes. I'm not going into details, but uh, if you are uh, interested, I would be happy to, do, to tell you about them. Um, okay, so far so good. Yeah, exactly. We are talking on bits. Uh, as uh, this is the the version of the Byzantine Agreement protocol that uh, we've implemented. Okay. Um, so uh, the main takeaways of these protocols: if uh, no player gets to halt until step three, and uh, the players uh, don't uh, get agreement on their bits then at the end of step three, they will be in agreement with probability at least one third. Uh, moreover, if at some step uh, the players end up in agreement on some bit, then in future steps they will remain in agreement on that bit. And uh, moreover, if uh, an honest player uh, gets to halt at either step one or step two or other uh, steps likewise, then uh, at the end of that step, the players uh, will remain in agreement on that bit. Um, of course, any player uh, will get to halt uh, in this protocol in expected number of nine steps. And uh, the properties of Byzantine agreement, namely consistency and agreement, are uh, indeed satisfied. Okay, so uh, let me show you some techniques used to make this uh, to make this pro protocol more practical. 
um, if uh, any user in the blockchain uh, performs the this uh, Byzantine agreement protocol, that would lead to a very large communication. So uh, one way to fix this issue is to just select a small subset of them to perform the, the protocol. So this, uh, this, uh, this fix would uh, solve the scalability issue of the blockchain trilemma. Uh, we would have uh, only a, a small set of players uh, performing the protocol, no matter how many they are. Um, another feature of uh, this technique proposed by Algorand is that each player has the same probability to be selected to perform the protocol. So that would uh, solve the decentralization issue. Uh, and further, uh, the, an adversary wouldn't know uh, who the player is, which the player is going to be selected to perform the protocol unless uh, he reveals uh, its identity. And uh, the players are going to be changed at each step of the protocol. So, yes. Yes. Uh, not sure about the online thing. I think uh, the Algorand's white paper also talks about the lazy but honest uh, assumption where the players might not be online, but, but when selected, they should uh, validate the block. I need to check this. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about this in the next slide. Thanks for the question. Yes. Um, I think Algorand works in both setting uh, permissionless and permissioned. Yeah. So in the next slide, uh, I'm going to uh, to give you uh, the description of which user can propose a block and who actually proposes it, which player can validate the proposed block. Uh, in the sense that the, uh, he is selected to play the, the protocol and how many players uh, are selected to do so. Uh, I need to mention that only the validation part uh, is implemented in the proof of concept. So first things first, who can propose the block? So suppose we have uh, R minus one blocks proposed so far, and let's see uh, how the ARF block is chosen. Uh, any player has access to a hash function modeled as random oracle and has a pair of uh, secret key, public key for a digital signature scheme. So what a player can do, he can, uh, he can compute a message uh, made by the previous block, BR minus one, the current round of the block R and the current uh, step, which in this case is zero, uh, sign this message and compute the hash value of it. If this hash value is less than some threshold P1, then the player is, uh, is called, in this case, potential leader and can propose uh, his own block of uh, transactions he's seen so far. Uh, by publishing the signature of this message, uh, any other player can check that uh, this player is indeed a potential leader uh, since he can compute his hash value. Uh, another thing to note is that any player has the same probability to be chosen as a potential leader, so as to propose a block. And uh, this constant P1 is chosen so that uh, we have at least uh, 
one honest player to, to be selected to propose this block. Of course, all these blocks may look uh, different from each other, so one of them should be chosen in order to perform uh, the, the Byzantine Agreement protocol on, so that the players would agree on. So the block is chosen so that it belongs to the player with the minimum hash value. Uh, in this case, this player is called uh, leader. Uh, and now let's see who can uh, who can play the protocol. Now, uh, given the the block proposed by the leader, the players are going to start the protocol with inputs as the block he proposed. Um, but okay, in the same fashion as before, any player can. Uh, compute the message concatenated by the previous block, the current round, and the current step one, uh, sign the message, and compute its hash value. If the hash value is less than some threshold P, then the player can indeed uh, play the protocol. And in this case, it's called verifier. Uh, any player has the same chance to, um, to play the, the protocol, and an important thing to note is that an adversary cannot predict who is going to play, who is going to be selected to uh, be involved in the protocol. Yes. Um, BR minus one is uh, some information related to the previous block proposed. Yes, that, that's public. Uh, what is not public? Um, no, the, the signature is also public. If once the verifier, uh, once a player computes the signature of the message, he makes it public. But uh, uh, but before, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, I think it, it's mainly uh, due to the use of the hash function. So unless the player uh, reveals the signature, an adversary cannot say if its hash is going to be less than P or not. Because uh, the hash of the signature makes uh, a random string. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but on this side, uh, once the players uh, reveal their signatures, the adversary can learn uh, if uh, it can learn the players that are going to be involved in, pro in the protocol by computing their hashes. So he can corrupt them to let them play as the adversary wishes. So to avoid this, we need to change the protocols, at, to, to change the players at each step of the protocol. So at, if we had some players uh, at step one, at sec, uh, step two, we need uh, different players to, to get into this uh, Byzantine Agreement protocol. Of course, if a player doesn't get selected at a certain step, he will know how to play it in future steps because he has copies of uh, messages from the previous steps. And as you've seen, uh, the steps only involve uh, counting bits. So he knows how to play further if selected. Um, the question is now, how many players should we choose to play uh, the steps of Byzantine agreement? Uh, we need to take into account two main issues. Uh, namely, uh, we need to make sure first that uh, we have two thirds of uh, honest people selected to play the steps. This is uh, required by the Byzantine Agreement protocol as we've seen so far. And the second issue is, is that uh, we need to make sure that um, 
the honest the honest players will reach agreement will get on uh, will get on the same beat on the same block so given the total number of players and the ratio of honest players uh, uh constants greater than two thirds and the failure probability f which you can think of uh, as a negligible quantity uh, the problem is to find an expected number of players to be selected such that the issues I've just told you about happen not, maybe not all the time, but with probability at least 1 minus f, so with very high probability. Uh, so now I'm going to show you some results of our uh, proof of concept implementation based on these ideas. So first, we computed the expected number of verifiers with a fixed ratio of honest age as 0 0.8, uh, different values of failure probability as 10 to minus 9 or 10 to minus 12, and varying numbers of players from 1,000 to 2,000. Uh, we got that, for example, in the, in the case of 2,000 players, we have uh approximately a third of them to be selected in expectation uh also notice that if the failure probability decreases so the the issues hold with a higher probability then uh more players need to be selected in uh, in expectation uh you can also see this graph for a fixed number of 1,000 players and a fixed failure probability 10 to minus 12, for varying uh, ratios of honest players starting from 0 0.68 to 0 0.9, we have uh, decreasing uh, values for the expected number of players to be selected. As uh, And this proves our intuition that once we have more honest players, then uh, less players are going to be selected to play the protocol. Uh, here we have some, some results, just to give you an idea of our uh, proof of concept uh, implementation. So we iterated our protocol 10 times. Uh, each iteration made of nine steps. Uh, we fixed the ratio of honest players 0 0.8 and the failure probability as 10 to minus 12. We first computed the expected a number of uh, players to be selected for uh, different numbers of total players, 100 to 500. And we got some timings and communication sizes uh, per uh, iteration, per round. Uh, as these numbers uh, may see, our implementation is not so practical. It's just a proof of con concept. Yeah. 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 Um, in the end, I would like to give a bit of context for uh, Radu and myself. We are part of a small research team at Bitdefender in cryptography. Our main interests are post-quantum cryptography and uh, privacy-preserving technologies. Uh, this project I just talked about, Algorand, was developed when discussing uh, blockchain applications in security, but currently this is on hold. Still, we are open to discuss uh, ways to apply cryptography in blockchain.